That inevitable day did finally dawn on May 3rd, 1999, as the Storm Prediction Center tracked severe storms by radar. The day was to prove the ultimate test of the life-saving value of tornado chasing. On this particular day, we had actually, throughout the day, thought there was a greater risk of severe thunderstorms than tornadoes. Uh, at about 4 o'clock, the first thunderstorm uh, developed about 80 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. It was weak, but based on the environmental conditions, based on how unstable it was and on the, the wind shear, he decided to issue a tornado watch. Gary, watching some strong storms in the southwest part of our state. Let's get the update right now. Gary. And we have a situation uh, that's, you know, fairly dangerous. Storms are in intensifying very rapidly. Um, explosive thunderstorm development and tornadoes are possible. These storms, some of them already have circulations. We have storm chasers all around them. No sign of any tornadoes at the moment. As conditions worsened, the station suspended normal programming to follow the developing storms and issue live tornado warnings. The station's weather studio became the nerve center, handling reports from tornado chasers all over the state. At the heart of the chase operation was Val Castor. Tornado is approximately three and a half miles west of the rail. Uh, it's getting bigger. Uh, the funnel goes all the way to the ground now. Right now is probably about 25 to 50 yards wide at the ground. It's a very narrow tornado. Uh, it's, it's not very big at the surface, but I'll guarantee you it's real intense at the surface. I mean, it's spinning really, really fast. Well, I'm going to get ready to tell you exactly where it is. We've got a road that goes right up behind it. At the start of the chase, Val Castor had positioned himself southwest of Oklahoma City. He was now chasing the tornado straight toward the metropolitan area. Of course, there's a lot of open country in here. This thing is major. This thing is a major tornado right now. We've got a very strong circulation to the ground. Uh, we've got lots of debris flying around right now. We are about a half a mile from the actual circulation on the ground. And uh, it's a very narrow funnel, but it's rotating very strongly, Gary. Oh my gosh, it just hit something. A thousand feet above, Ranger 9 pilot Leroy Tatum was beaming back live aerial pictures of the storm's progress. For mile after mile, Val Castor stuck fast to the tornado's track. I don't see any uh, structures right now in the direct path of it, but I wouldn't want to be in the path of it. We're about a mile from the town, so we're going to have to move on down the road. Okay, uh, is the wraparound coming out? No, it's pulling out a little bit to the left. What's happening? I don't see any wraparound coming behind it at all. I don't see any wraparound precip. We've got great visibility where we're at. If you haven't gone to Cellar Base, but you really need to go now. This is a huge circulation. From Ranger 9. Okay. Yep, tornado, uh, they have, the Ranger 9 has tornado about the west, about three miles west of uh, Chickasha. Yeah. Radar revealed clear pictures of the storm's track. Uh, Northeast of Gracemont, Hogar, Union City area. But tornado touchdowns could only be verified by chasers on the ground. It looks like it's up the golf ball side. On the ground right now, right hand side, tornado on the ground, on the debris ground. cloud, debris cloud. There it is, multiple vortex tornado on the ground. We're in a really hilly area, I'm we can only see it when we get to the top of the hill. Now, this, the movement, the movement, I'm going to put it about 30 miles an hour. Okay, Here, we're about a half a mile from it again. Um, like, oh, we're getting uh, leaves falling out of the sky right now around us. Okay. What an intense circulation, Gary. Yes, sir. This thing has a very intense circulation. Keep talking to me. Yeah, I'll keep talking. Gary, we got visual of it. It's only about a half a mile down the road from us. It is uh, definitely a wedge. I mean, I, you know, based on visual, it's at least an F3. The storm grew to awesome proportions. Val Castor was using all his chasing skills to stay close enough to report on the tornado's movements, but positioned to keep himself and Amy out of danger. 
Oh, this thing is large, Gary. No, let's go back. Let's go back. Right. 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 I'm just going to read you the time of arrivals, okay? We have a large, wedge shaped, multiple vortex tornado on the ground west of Chickasha. By now, the chase reports and the live pictures had made it clear that this was a killer tornado. It could affect the burden area, basically, it's, you know, it's almost there. Large Passing the chaser's reports onto viewers, Gary England stressed that running away or hiding underground were the only options for survival. With this tornado, you need to be below ground level. Uh, you folks, it is moving over North Chickasha, Port Amber, the circulation is about six miles across. It's a huge damage path. Near the community of Lawton, still southwest of Oklahoma City, the tornado grew to an F3 with wind speeds of up to 206 miles per hour. As well as the television station team, other less experienced chasers were still pursuing the monstrous cloud. Many had never seen such a tornado before. Amateur chasers Rick Jarvis and Chad Lawson found themselves driving through a rainstorm into serious danger. Okay, hang on. Look, 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 another one. Another tornado. Two tornadoes. One, two, three. Good chicken, Shay. You're moving south, but you turn around. Get out of there. Go back. Rick, that's moving right out. We've got to get out of here. Rick, you're going to drop anywhere at any time right now. Coming out of here. Turn around. We're at the northeast side of chicken, Shay. Looking to the north, we have a wedge shaped tornado. Uh, could be in the range of 200 to 250 miles an hour. Go, go, go! Go! I gotta beat it. I can beat it along this way. No, Ricky, no, that's coming too close to us. Get on that side of this highway now. Ricky, oh my gosh. Ready? Ready? I'm getting nervous. This is bad. Look at that. Look at that. Rick, you just Ready? go. Ready? Yes. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Be careful, Ricky. Another stovepipe a tornado okay. coming down. Uh, Gary, Gary, Gary. Yes. Those red lights are the Chickasha Airport lights right there. The red lights are on the south side, side of the airport right now. Go, 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 go. Finally realizing the danger, arguing chasers Rick and Chad spun their car around and escape from the scene. We see some red flashing lights. That is the Chickasha Airport. Reference in the middle of the screen. It is north of the Chickasha Airport. Major damage at the airport. I repeat, major damage at the airport. It's leveled entire buildings. It's leveled entire buildings. We have a new tornado on the ground, Gary. Mark Hill, Where? Boone, Oklahoma. New tornado warning on the airport. Further tornadoes were now touching down across the state. Reports were coming in from other members of the Channel 9 chase team who were following the new tornadoes in the outbreak. Mark, I'm going to give it northeast at, uh, at 30. Is that about right? That's correct, Gary. Continues to move northeast. Okay. You still on the ground? Yes, it is. Okay. We have two tornadoes on the ground at the moment. Gary, the tornado continues to move. It's very ragged. It continues with multiple tunnels around the main circulation with quite a bit of debris rising at times from the funnel base itself. This is a storm that you need to be below ground level. It's extremely dangerous. As you look at this uh, tornado from Ranger 9 Live, uh, we have it uh, right along Interstate 44, not too far from the toll booth, moving northeast at about 30 miles per hour. Now talk to me again. We see a large wedge tornado. Evidently, the circulation... Say again, Val? Evidently, the circulation is bigger than what we thought. It is a huge circulation. It's throwing debris uh, a mile around the tornado. In other words, a mile outside of the circulation, dropping big chunks of debris. Let's go to XL very quickly, and uh, we're going very quickly here. And this is a classic uh, tornadic hook echo, strong mesocyclone. It's becoming totally rain wrapped. It's uh, covering parts of I 44, moving into Newcastle. It's very dedicated. Conceivably, be an F4. We don't know for sure. With an F4, you need to be below ground. But once again, a strong tornado continues. The greatest danger still came from the monster funnel being chased by Amy and Val Castor. We're on 149 Street right now. Uh, North South Street is Portland.
The tornado ground its way toward the city's southern suburbs, with Val and Amy finally having to give up their chase, unable to drive through blocked roads. With Val cut off, Gary England continued to broadcast pictures from the chase helicopter. Astonishingly, through all the mayhem, the mobile radar trucks from Oklahoma University had also carried on with their chase. The scientists were now so close to the major tornado that their dual Doppler sets were recording unprecedented radar images. 2.2 kilometers. Oh, boy. 2 kilometers. We feel like it's coming towards us and doing anything stupid. Stop and do U-turn. All right. Well, you see a lot of debris now when we get into the debris. Yeah. Okay, I stop there. Oh, I can go to this picnic area. Yeah, turn there. Boy, there. Finally, the team pulled off the road and concentrated on obtaining the best possible data from both of their trucks. They recorded the highest wind speed ever known. But for the scientists, the true value of this ultimate chase is yet to be evaluated. The data will be analyzed for many months. In Oklahoma City, the chase became more fragmented as even experienced chasers were cut off by the intense destruction. Seventy-six tornadoes touched down on May 3, 1999. Forty-two people lost their lives. But without the media warnings, many more would have died. The damage is absolutely incredible, and Ranger 9 is following the damage path in the far distance. If you look on television, you'll see a huge tornado, power line flashes. Okay, you folks... Those warnings were only made possible by a combination of ever advancing radar technology and ever more skillful chasers on the ground. As I looked at that thing, and I remember thinking, 
this is happening and I can't really believe it's happening. It was really surreal. It was just unbelievable that there was this thing that appeared to be connected to the ground and the sky at the same time. This thing was just goring the earth. It was like it was part of the atmosphere and part of the earth. It was unbelievable. It was a gut-wrenching experience.